Are you there? Silvio, it's Martina. Let's yeah. check. Let's okay. just a okay. second. Otherwise, oh, no. we can here, start. Here, here, here. No, no, here we go. I okay. think Francesco is here. Thank you. Okay. No, no one. Yes, yes. Good. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I don't have a webcam here at my desk, but okay. I can start no problem with the with the presentation. Do you all see it? It's starting. Yes, we can. So I'm gonna present you the work we've been doing here um, when modeling uh, the Carnia uh, subregion. It's a mountain area in in Friuli, Venezia Giulia region. And this presentation is gonna be about the approach we, we used also to model and to simulate some scenarios uh, about this area. So just quickly, since this presentation is a lot about the approach we used, I'm gonna go first to the uh, LEAP modeling tool, starting from the interface, going to talking a little bit also about the way it handles data. And then I'm gonna go later to the work we've done and see how LEAP was um, used to reach the objectives we, we set ourselves. So uh, LEAP is a, a very widely used software worldwide and it's used uh, at very different geographical resolutions from cities to regional and nation, nationwide areas. And it's a scenario-based tool. So, um, and it's used to, it can track energy consumption, production, and emissions within all economic sector uh, of a certain area. Um, it also allows to optimize uh, capacity expansion planning with a least cost approach. And last but not least, I would say it's very important because it's uh, very user friendly. In just the data and it produces a lot of graphs that are very useful for the user without having to process them uh, more afterwards. So um, here you can see on the right, the way that uh, sectors can be uh, divided in branches and sub branches. Um, the user can decide how with, uh, with what resolution to divide branches, sub branches down to even a single technology. And this can be done uh, accordingly to the availability of data. So this is also very important because it gives a lot of flexibility uh, depending on whether a data is available with which resolution you can uh, model uh, differently uh, the system. And then for each sector, for each technology, single data can be inserted with uh, percentages, shares, uh, or costs, uh, as you can see in the picture below. Um, what, regarding temporal data, um, there are different resolutions. Uh, LEAP works with the yearly simulations, uh, but allows to input data with various resolution down to even a single hourly resolution. And uh, here you have two different examples. For example, uh, the PV availability, it's in this case was split in four seasons and night and day profiles. Uh, while on the right, you can see the peak load shape that this was aggregated into nine uh, slices uh, of thousand, about a thousand hours each uh, in a kind of step function, just to give an idea of um, the, the load with respect to the peak. Um, very important is that LEAP is a scenario-based tool, so you can compute at the same time, simulate multiple scenarios. Um, the most common practice is to generate a scenario for each measure, for each policy, uh, even a single policy in a single sector. And then very important is that LEAP allows to combine all these, sub these uh, intermediate scenarios into final scenarios. Um, that combines all the, all the policies, all the measures that are taken into account. And so this also allows to um, analyze the synergies or the overlapping of some policies because as you know, they don't simply add up uh, on top of each other. And last, as I said before, uh, LEAP already uh, creates a lot of graphs, uh, very uh, flexible. Also the, the user can decide what to plot 
uh, depending on the needs or, or what you want to analyze, and also creates energy balance tables and Sankey diagrams, and everything can be easily exported even to Excel if it's just a table. So moving on to the Carnia work, to the work we, we did uh, while developing the Carnia energy plan. Obviously, the first step was to gather and, uh, all the data from all the sectors and all the municipalities and compile an energy balance. Then the other steps are to produce an energy model and to start develop the scenarios. Later, we, we analyze the results. And the last step of all these process is to actually translate these analysis into some proposals. Uh, some actual proposals, some more concrete proposal to, to reach these uh, objectives. As you can see, LEAP basically is the main tool for the uh, three steps in the middle of, the, of this process. Um, the objectives of the Carney Energy Plan are the same as any other um, policy for, for green transition and decarbonization is energy savings through um, energy saving measures, deployment of renewable energy sources, and reduction of um, GSG emis emissions. Okay. So moving on to Carnia. Carnia is uh, uh, um, an area. It comprises 28 municipalities in the mountain uh, part of Friuli Venezia Giulia. And it's um, a very large area compared to its population, and it's very on a very, very various terrain with a lot of small and some larger uh, settlements. And on the right, you can see the main sectors on which we divided the economy, the, all the activity of Carnia, which will also represent the benchmark, the business as usual scenario, and that is going to be useful for comparison uh, later on. So the first step was to um, to do the to um, produce the Carnia energy balance. The base year was selected as 2013, um, and here you can see in these two pie charts that represent the all the final energy demand on the left divided by sector and on the right divided by fuel. So um, it's a very peculiar of this area that there are two big uh, pulp and paper industries that uh, represent over a third of the final energy consumption and they are methane fueled mainly and another thing that needs to be taken into account is that the the gray slice on the left it's a pumping station from an oil from the oil pipeline the transalpine oil pipeline that brings oil from trieste port uh, up to germany and these two sectors are very hard. They, they are basically not touched from this study. So already a big share of the final energy demand will not be uh, object of this study. But after that, you can see that the residential is 19.6% and also the transport sectors 12% are very energy consuming sectors. And this will be the main focus of the study. On the right, you can see that Methane and uh, electricity, they are the two main energy vectors of this region. So for the population trends, both constant and decreasing uh, population trends, uh, two scenarios have been developed up to 2050. And uh, these final scenarios combine intermediate scenarios with different measures and different technologies at different penetration levels. Uh, the main difference, I, I would say, between intermediate and policy scenarios, as, as we called it, is the um, intervention, the renovation on the buildings for energy efficiency, for um, uh, saving energy savings in the, in the buildings, especially the coating. And this will make a big difference, especially because it brings down a lot the energy demand for space heating. Um, LEAP allows to consider all the costs, uh, comprising fuel cost, the demand cost, which comprises the technology substitution, and which um, so the cost of the technology itself analyzed, 
over its expected lifetime. The transformation, uh, so all the costs are relative to plant operations, and last uh, but not least, the, the externality costs, so dust and uh, CO2 emissions. So, LEAP, as I said, uh, runs on a yearly basic calculations, and for each year, it allows uh, to, it shows, it brings out um, the energy balance for each sector, for each uh, technology, for each fuel, it depends on what the user wants to analyze. And by watching the base year balance uh, out of LEAP, one can do some calibration with respect to the data that we gathered, uh, from before, and so it's very important to um, calibrate a model before running it and analyze uh, results for the future. Moving on to the results, here uh, LIPS uh, LIP, uh, shows the final energy demand for each sector. Um, you can see all sectors are all these graphs represent for a decreasing population, so. Or in the business as usual, the decrease in, uh, in the consumption due to uh, population, a slight population decrease. While in the other two sectors, one can appreciate more the, um, the impact of policies. For example, in the green policy graphs on the right, one can see that the residential sector, due to the um, renovation of the building, so the more efficient coatings of the building, the residential sector, so the yellow on top, is quite smaller, relevantly smaller than the intermediate uh, scenario. Um, also, the, the fuels, all the, all the energy vectors can be analyzed. They use their trend here. For example, we can see the secondary fuel imports. Uh, I didn't show the first fuel import, the primary fuel imports because they are 100% methane and mainly for the uh, pulp and paper industry, but the secondary fuels um, they are very related to the transport sector, so they're quite interesting. And again, one can see all the differences between different scenarios and the impact of different penetration technologies, for example, hybrid against uh, some hybrid in the intermediate scenarios against some full electric uh, transport in the green policy scenario. And then we move on to the emissions. Um, these emissions have been calculated with respect to the peak emissions of 2016, uh, yeah, 2015, I think. And we, one can appreciate also the, diff um, the reduction of re respectively 38 and 45 percent um, with respect to the to the end uh, to the to the peak. And they are again. Um, oh, interesting is to notice that um, LEAP also converts the um, other emissions into uh, with their global warming potential. So, for example, the yellow at the bottom uh, of these graphs represents the leakages of methane uh, from the methane grid. And as you all know, uh, methane has a very high global warming potential with respect to CO2. So, LEAP already converts it and includes it in the, in the study. And last, we can uh, something that is very appreciated of LEAP is that it allows also a, an economical analysis of uh, the scenarios. And both in absolute values, but on the right, you can also see that you're able directly to uh, the differences among scenarios, the uh, di direct comparison. And for example, here in the um, green policy scenarios, the residential costs, the investment costs, are very much higher uh, due to the, the coating investment, which is pretty relevant with respect to the business as usual was where this cost was not existing. Um, the total costs, uh, they include the demand cost that we saw before with the transformation um, cost, import, export, and also the environmental costs. Um, for example, here in the Carnia area, there are two big hydroelectric power plants which produce a lot of electricity. And this electricity is obviously uh, much more than the, the demand of such a small territory. And so this electricity is exported and you can see it's below the x-axis. And so it's a profit and directly 
that can be seen very clearly in the graph. So just to summarize, uh, that LEAP is a very powerful tool and it's suitable for long-term uh, analysis and edge planning, uh, not really intended for optimization, even if it's, it considers um, the peak load shape and other um, time resolution uh, data. And it really allows the um, different levels of accuracy depending on, on the availability of data, which is something very important when you have to uh, collect data on the, on the territory uh, first-handed. And last, uh, that it allows a very good visualization uh, of, and comparison about uh, different scenarios and um, can provide very useful guidelines when, uh, when writing a, an energy plan for uh, a region or sub-region or even a national um, entity. So thank you, and this was my presentation. Thank you very much, Francesco, also for keeping the time. Um, I, my proposal would be that we directly go to the next presentation. So we have these uh, two case studies that uh, maybe can guide a little bit the discussion afterwards.